Hello everyone, and welcome back to this next video in the eHoudini Academy Foundation module. In this video, we are going to start working on the material system, specifically the material utilities that we'll need to texture our building, basically to bring it from this to something more like that. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to develop two utilities. And these utilities, you can find them down here, are called the Simple Unreal Texture, and the extrude and texture node. And both of these basically allow us to apply a material, apply some basic UVs in some cases, and also um, texture our surfaces. So they work both in Houdini and in Unreal. Now we will update the system later to make it uh, compilable, which by definition, a material system in Houdini is not. Um, but for now, we're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna create something using Quick shades. Now, before I actually go and explain to you the new utility nodes, um, let's quickly dive into what UVs actually are. Because I think some of you might have never encountered UVs before or have very limited experience with them. And they are something that I think requires a little bit more thorough explanation before we dive into them. So let's go over to the um, example file, version 1.1 again. And down below here, I have a new section available with some examples on how UVs work and how we can manipulate them. And of course, I will make this file available to everyone um, once the course finishes, once the uh, foundation module is complete. Now over here, I have a couple of examples prepared. Um, at the top, we have examples for the basic UV layouts and how they work. Then here I have examples on how the new utility nodes work. And here we have a series of different ways how we can project and create UVs and manipulate them. Now over here on the top, let's start with the basics. Let's grab a simple grid and I'm gonna go up here to the top of my screen and I'm gonna split my viewport side by side. So now I have a left view, which by default will probably set itself to UV view. If it doesn't, you can go here and click on UV viewport. And this will give you the UV view mode, right? And on the right, I have my default 3D viewport still, just like before. Now um, here below this, I have a UV quick shade node. And if I click on that one, it will apply a simple UV grid gray texture. And this one is basically a uh, debug texture for your UVs. So this grid by default does not actually come with UVs. If I look inside of it, by default, there are no UV attributes present, which means that this grid has no UV information at all, okay? Um, however, when we apply a UV quick shade node, it will apply some UVs because inside of it, there is a switch that will trigger and turn itself on in case there are no UVs present. There's an uh, expression up here that checks if the UV attribute exists or anything related to UVs. And if it doesn't, then it will automatically apply this UV texture node. Now we're not gonna dive too much into this, but we will mimic this behavior to some extent when we create our first utility the uh, simple UV uh, and material node. Now what this has done at this moment is applied a simple UV texture based on the bounding space of this grid. So if I grab that grid and I go ahead and scale it, you see how the texture stretches along and over here on the left, it doesn't change. It stays in the same place. Now the moment I rotate this grid, it will rotate the texture, but it's still oriented in the same way. And that's basically because we're using a simple UV projection along the cardinal directions of our grid. Um, so no matter what this thing is oriented in, it will always project straight down. And only if we go ahead and make this thing pretty much straight, our UVs go away. Now, um, we can change that, of course, by changing the projection axes here. So if I change it to the Z axis, it will no longer work because now it's literally trying to project into a zero space polygon. 
right? From this angle, there's nothing. But if I change my grid again, then it will work because now it actually has height, so it can project. Let's uh, return that back. Now next, it does have the ability to scale. And if I scale my UVs here, look what happens on the left. Now at this point, if I zoom out here inside this viewport, my UV view, you can see how the UVs actually scale inside the UV space. And on the left, we have that more grid-like section. This is the zero to one grid space for our UVs, meaning that here we have the UV coordinates, the UV gnomon. So our UVs go from zero in the left bottom corner to the right. So the U channel goes from zero to one along the bottom from left to right. And the V channel goes from zero to one from bottom to top. So this is basically a coordinate system. Down here is zero, zero. Up there is one, one. This is one, zero. And that is zero, one, okay? basic UVs. And we see that same reflection down here inside of our UV coordinates. Now at the moment this is applying a point UV, so we have UVs on our points and this will work. I prefer to use vertex UVs because they're a bit more flexible, just like how normals are more flexible when they're applied to um, vertex instead of point attributes. But it will still work and we basically have a simple UVW coordinate here. It's called UVs because you actually only really need the first two attributes, but it comes as a vector. So um, the last here basically describes the depth in UV space, in this 2D space. So we only care about the first two columns. Now, as you can see, we have coordinates all over this. And if I go and grab one of my points here, it should highlight that particular coordinate. So in this case, that's uh, point 87. It has coordinate 0 0.42, uh, 0 0.88, something. Okay. Now we can use a UV edit node to change the coordinates in UV space, or we can use a simple edit node over here to change the coordinates in 3D space. So these are two separate space environments. If I go and grab the simple edit node here and I move some of my points, Notice how the UVs inside of this object don't actually change here on the left. Now let's grab this object here and let's move it over. And when we do that, we actually stretch our texture. And that's because our UVs here on the left have not changed. They still assume they're in the same grid layout that they were before. And as such, um, we get this stretching going on. It tries to apply the textures between the original coordinates and it looks like this. Now, on the other hand, we could also try to apply this to our UVs. So instead of using the edit node to manipulate our point positions, we can also manipulate our UV coordinates as well. And for that, you can use a UV edit node. Now the UV edit node, just like the edit node, simply stores changes that you've made. So even if I were to apply this to my current edit over here, like so. Now, if I go and try to select some of my points, by default, if I try to move those, it will still create a new edit node. And I'm not quite sure um, how to switch this around using hotkeys. I have looked and I have some trouble finding it. So if you do know it, please let me know. But you can do this by flipping it around using um, either single view and then switch it to UV viewport. And then if you try to edit in here, it will automatically apply it to our UV edit node, or it will create a new one. And then we can manipulate it here. But if you want to see both of your views at the same time, then all you really have to do is make sure that your right viewport, the one here on the right, is your UV view, and the one on the left is your 3D view. And if you have that set, then now we can actually manipulate our UVs and see them at the same time. So up here, as you can see, I can actually go ahead and drag my UVs around. And if I do so, 
it will change what it looks like over here. Or I can grab some other ones and drag them over and then maybe scale them. So I can change the way how it looks over here on the left on my mesh. Um, and as you can see, the way how the UVs look inside of our zero to one space directly changes the looks on the mesh. Now, um, when it comes to UVs, let's get rid of this. And I'm going to change this back to a full zero to one layout. You might notice that in some cases, our UVs are actually reversed. And you can see this from the um, gray texture here. If the numbers are reversed, our UVs are actually being projected upside down, like so. Now, if I take this texture and I uh, were to flip it in the X direction, in negative, then now our UVs are in the right orientation, right? You can see they are being projected properly. Um, however, the entire UV space has just moved outside of our zero to one space. In general, this is not a problem. However, some software do prefer if your models have all your UVs inside the actual UV space, as it's called. So in that case, you would have to move this thing over. And for that, we could use a UV transform node. So let's plug one in. And instead of manually moving all our UVs using the edit function here, which again is a manual edit, not a procedural one, we can use a UV transform node and move all of these over by one to the right. So now they are right side around and they are inside of our zero to one space, which is good. Um, now let's have a quick look at what UVs actually do on a 3D model. Cause so far, all we've really done is have a look at a flat object over here and how that projects into 2D space. Let's take a 3D object like this cube. Let's apply some basic texture to it. And this one already has a UV projection, as you can see here. And then let's have a look at how this works. So this is actually a cube. And this cube kind of mimics like a cardboard box. So if I grab my animation over here and I pull up my timeline, I can actually unfold this box and you can see how it actually looks like our texture here on the right. So all of our UVs are projected in 2D space. The texture on this box is projected in 2D space like this. But the moment we fold our box up, it becomes a three dimensional object, right? So that's how UVs basically work. We need to take a 3D object and unwrap it into 2D space. Now in this case, this box is a complete object and doesn't need any seams besides where, you know, normally you would have a seam on a cardboard box. If we were to apply, say, a texture to this box, um, like let's say if we grab this quick shade node and quickly browse for one of our textures, like let's say our granite floor texture over here. Then now you can see we do have some textures applied and they do wrap around the box in a certain way. And if I unwrap it, however, you can see how it is completely flat, right? Just like here. So our texture space is projected onto this box. And then as we fold it up, the textures themselves get rotated and moved around to still work on this object. Now, in this case, we have a simple 2D texture. We have uh, this texture over here that we're applying. Now, let me switch this back around to a UV viewport and then the main perspective view on the right. And let's have a look at the slightly more complex piece of uh, geometry because this one here is just a cube we can unwrap into one single piece. But if we look down here, we can find a rubber toy. And the rubber toy is one of Houdini's default pieces of geometry 
and it comes with a texture inside of the HDA. If you right click on it, go to Type Properties, and then go to Extra Files, you can find it right there. So in my case, I have exported it out to my uh, C drive, in this case. And what I can do over here on the left is I can load in that texture as my background texture for the UV viewport. So if I press the D key, and I go over here to background, then um, under the UV tab, we can specify which texture I want to load for my UV view. Let's go over here and let's browse for that one texture. So here are all the default textures in Houdini's picture folder. I'm gonna go to my C drive where I've stored this texture for the low res toy and load that one up. And now over here, you can see that we now have our texture for our UVs overlaid, right? If I hide this for a moment, you can see here's the texture for the rubber toy and our UVs project perfectly onto that. And that's why our toy looks like this. Now, in our case, these UVs are actually vertex based UVs. Okay, so like I showed you before, we can have point UVs, but we can also have vertex UVs. And that means that now on this mesh, we can have all of our points merged, but you can still have your UVs split. So um, that's why I suggest you use vertex UVs and not point UVs, because point UVs couldn't create this texture properly. Okay, let's actually try that out. Let's create an attribute promote node. And I'm going to promote my UVs from vertices to points. And the moment I do that, it's going to actually connect them all together. And wherever there was a seam, it's going to stretch them to actually connect them all up that way. So the best thing you can probably do here is to use um, vertex UVs, not point UVs. Okay, so at this point, we've gone over what UVs are and how they sort of work. And then now let's have a look at how we can create them and manipulate them using a couple of different nodes in Houdini, some default ones and some that come with the Houdini Labs toolset. So let's move over to the left here. And I have some examples prepared. And the first one is the UV texture in bounding space. So the UV texture node. Let's have a look at this torus here. And before I continue, I'm also going to switch back my uh, background texture. So press D inside this viewport. Then go over here, browse, and then you'll find inside of here um, the Houdini picture texture folder. If you click on that, you can scroll up. This will bring you into the picture folder. And then down at the bottom, you can find the um, textures for the grid right there. So there's a color version, if you want to use that one. But you'll also find a gray version, which is maybe a bit easier to see. So uh, that's your choice, but uh, let's go with that. Then in here, if I look down, I have applied a quick shade. So we can actually see this grid texture on our torus. And below that, we have these um, UV texture nodes. Now you'll notice that if I select the left one in its default state, um, nothing is going to change. And that's basically because, like I mentioned, the quick shade node comes with a default UV texture node inside of it. So if there are no UVs on this object, um, it will simply create them. Now here we can go ahead and recreate them again using this particular node, and we can manipulate it a bit more thoroughly. So we can say, for example, offset our projection in UV space, right? We can scale it. And we can also change the angle of our projection. And this will rotate it around its pivot point, which is located at location 0, 0 in our UV space. OK, so this is a very simple UV transformation. Now we can also change it to different types of projections, like I showed you before. Um, we can change this to the X axis. So now it projects in this orientation or in the Z axis. 
like that. Um, alternatively, we can also change the texture type to any of these other shapes. So this one, orthographic, means it projects along a XYZ orientation. Um, if we switch it to cylindrical, then now it's going to project more like a tube going around this object. And while it might not work well in the height direction, right? If something is completely flat, uh, horizontal, it won't project properly, but it does work like this. And you will notice one thing about the UV texture node, and that is that it tries to make sure that it always projects inside the UV space. If we look back here to orthographic and we switch it back to Y, this torus is perfectly inside the UV 0 to 1 space, right? It basically fits to its bounds. If I go and change the scale of this, notice how the texture stays in place. So no matter the shape or the rotation of this object, these UVs are always going to stay the same. Now let's have a look over here to the right, where we have the UV projection node. And for this, I'm going to pull up my rubber toy once more. And let's go ahead and project a new projection on this using a um, UV project node. And this one actually gives you a little uh, widget that we can use to project UVs on this object. And if we look closely at it, you can see that it kind of stretches if it goes too horizontal from the projection. But other than that, it's pretty much a straight projection on it. And the UV space is represented by this uh, frustrum here. So everything inside of this frustrum is going to be inside the 0 to 1 space. Everything outside of it, like the tail or these fins, are going to be outside of it. So we can actually project in a very specific position. Now, likewise, we can go over here and use a polar projection and that basically means that it will try to project like a sphere um, from all directions around this object. Now you might get some wrapping around at the very center when you look straight down on this sphere. Ultimately you're trying to uh, take a 2D texture and wrap it around so you kind of get the same effect as a globe, right? Where the uh, top and bottom are a bit more stretched than the middle. Then on the right this example, again, is a cylindrical projection. So here you can see that we are projecting on our object. And again, the top and bottom are a bit squashed, a bit stretched. That still works. And then finally, we have an option called wrap. And wrap just tries to shrink wrap the texture around the object. Uh, depending on the scale of this sphere, it will look slightly different. So if I scale this one, you can see how it tries to sort of fit the texture on this object as well as it can. Um, this might not be a bad method to make sure that you have an object at like this unwrapped, but again, it doesn't quite work for our toy because it has too many shapes on it. If you actually want to do a proper unwrap, you're better off getting something like this. And that takes some work, right? UV unwrapping, basically. Now, one way to see how much a texture is actually squashed or stretched between world space and UV space is by turning on the UV distortion view. And if you have one of these projection nodes or other UV uh, creation nodes in your network, then you should have this attribute available as an intrinsic attribute. If you press D in your viewport and you go to the visualize tab, you can find the UV distortion common visualizer. And this one should be by default in your scene. If we turn that on, then now it will represent how much a texture is squashed or stretched as a color. If it's blue, it means it's being squashed. If it's red, it's being stretched. And the intensity shows you by how much. Okay? So in this case, you can see that as it's wrapped this texture around, it has really stretched out our UVs over here on the head of our character. But on the rest of the body, especially down here, it actually looks quite fine. If we look over here on the left, where we have our um, projection, you can see that everything that's pretty much aligned with the camera frustrum is either light blue, 
or white, and that's fine. But the moment we go over here to the back, it's red. If I change the position around, or maybe it's rotation, you can see how the stretching changes. And this is also visualized here in the viewport for the UVs. Along the edges of the mesh, you can see there's a lot of stretching going on, right? That's uh, quite psychedelic, but anyway. So this way we can see that if we take other projection methods, there's a lot of squashing going on if we use a polar projection, um, whereas if we use the cylindrical projection, it's actually being stretched a lot. But at least along the horizontal axes, it actually looks fine, mostly. So um, that's something you can use, and it can be quite useful. Let's turn this back off though. Then next, we can also manipulate our UVs using the UV transform node. So over here, I have another torus, and it's currently being projected down in the Y axis, right, like so. And here I have a couple of um, UV transform nodes lined up. So this first one here is scaling down my UVs, meaning that I can apply a scale to my UVs. And if I scale them down, then my texture is going to take up, um, well, less space on the object. Or rather, the texture itself is being scaled up, so we have less detail on it. So let's say I grab one of the other textures that we have, right? So over here, let's grab our job folder. Go to our textures folder. And let's grab the red brick texture. Okay, so because our texture is very small, the detail on our texture is also very low res, of course. So if I scale this on the other hand, I increase the scale. You can notice how it basically starts to tile on this mesh, and I have a lot more detail, right? So the size of your UVs directly corresponds to the detail that you have inside of your mesh. Next to this, we can transform it. So that's very simple. We can move it up or down and left and right. And this one will pan the texture. Then we can rotate in X and this will actually rotate in 3D space. So it's kind of like changing your projection angle. Uh, in this case, it will have projected it on the side of this object like so or maybe on this side. But if you actually want to rotate the texture in UV space using a UV transform node, then we can use up here our rotation option in Z. And this will actually rotate it along its pivot. Now, if you want to change the pivot, you can do that down here in X and Y. So if we want to rotate on the middle of this grid and not on the left bottom corner, we can set it like so. And as long as our UVs were centered around this, now we're basically rotating our UVs around the center of that. That's pretty interesting. Okay, so thus far what we've done is we've done some UV projection and UV transformation. But let's have a look at what we can do if we already have UVs and we simply want to move them around and redistribute them inside of our UV space. Well, there's two default nodes that do this pretty well. The first one is the UV unwrap, and this one is pretty simple, actually. It simply takes in a couple of different angles, it creates new UVs, and then it redistributes them inside of your UV space. So we can do this either in a square or in a strip. And that means that uh, it tries to distribute them inside of this area. Okay, so this is a little bit limited. You can decide how much spacing you want between your different UV islands. Um, you can decide if you want it to stretch so it matches the entire space, but it's not super flexible. Then next to that, let's take our rubber toy again, which already has some complex UVs. And let's re-lay out those UVs, lay them out as 
efficiently as possible. Because in the end, if you've created a model that doesn't have a texture yet, and you want to go and texture that, well, then you need to use a UV layout node to redistribute those UVs, to create as efficient as possible a coverage for those UVs, so they look better in your final texture, right? So you don't lose too much detail because your model doesn't cover enough of the texture space. You have too many empty spaces between it, like these uh, black zones here. Well, the UV layout node allows us to change that. So if we scroll down here, we have several options and overrides. And here we can change how it works. For example, we can say we want to scale all of our islands to match their surface area. This will try to make sure that if the object has different UV sizes, it will rescale them so they will match. Now in this case, uh, this model was already quite well distributed, so it doesn't really matter too much. We can also change how it rotates them around. So let's change it to 22.5 degrees. And this will allow it to rotate the pieces more so we can try to find a better coverage value. And you can play with this if you want to. Uh, just keep in mind that as you do this, it can become a bit heavier. The more UV pieces you have, the slower it becomes. It generally creates really good UV layouts if you set it up in the right way. Just make sure you actually have UVs that cover space on your model. If you have any UVs that are super thin and long and don't cover much space on your model, it might actually cause them to um, scale everything else down to compensate. That's not very useful. So uh, in general, make sure you provide good UVs to the UV layout node. But if you do, the results are pretty good. Now, there are a couple of other nodes that we can use, and they mostly involve labs nodes. Now, there are a lot of UV nodes actually in the labs toolset, because by default, Houdini's UV nodes are a little lacking. There are quite a couple of them. I don't always use all of them. But next to that, there's also some labs nodes. And the labs nodes are a bit hit and miss, but they can be very useful if you use them properly. So one here, for example, is the labs auto UV. And the auto UV allows you to re-UV an object based on a couple of different variables. Personally, I sometimes use this if I need to manually create some UVs on my models, but it can be hard to control. And I personally don't use it in any procedural systems. I only use it when I need to manually tweak it by hand because this doesn't always generate good results, but it can create new islands for you and unwrap it. And it has several different options available as well for methods on how to unwrap. Like here's a standard unwrap node, for example, inside of this node. Like, I think it's right there. Um, then next, we also have the UV visualize node. Now this one is quite interesting. If we have an object that already has UVs, like uh, this, for example, then the visualize node can project them in 3D space as 2D objects. And then you can use this nice slider here to reassemble it into a 3D shape. So that can be pretty useful. And then last, I think I want to quickly show you how you can transfer UVs. Now let's have a quick look here at this um, big head, one of the other default objects you can get from Houdini. Um, and in this case, it has a nice texture on it. It has a nice distribution of UVs um, and it has a decent resolution. But let's say we want to de-res this object. So let's go down here and we have a poly reduce node. Now the poly reduce node allows you to take a model and using different weights or different methods, we can reduce its poly count based on uh, certain criteria. I'm not going to go too deep into this here, but it's a very useful node if you want to de-res your models and create lower resolution results. Now, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm downscaling my model to a certain percentage. So let's grab this and let's bring it down to, say, 25%. Okay, so that's a nice resolution right there. And the nice part about the PolyReduce is it does actually try to keep your UVs. But let's say for whatever reason, our UVs actually got destroyed. 
So I'm going to go ahead and turn these on here, which gets rid of our UVs. And then we need to go and transfer them back. Now, um, since the UVs in this case are a vertex attribute, this doesn't work very well with a standard attribute transfer. If we take this model over here and we try to transfer our original vertex UVs back, it will start to look like that. So the labs tool set actually has a nice alternative called UV transfer. And this one does more accurately um, transfer your UVs. Now at this point, um, we've covered the majority of the UV nodes that I actually want to cover in this lecture. There are other UV nodes available, especially inside the labs tool set, like I shown before. Um, for example, the Ryzen nodes over here. I have not really used these that much yet, but I've seen people use them and they are pretty powerful. So if you want to explore UV editing in Houdini and you want to use some ready-made nodes, then look into the labs nodes. They can be pretty powerful. However, for our purposes, we are going to focus on the nodes I just covered, especially the default Houdini nodes. And uh, let's have a quick look at the actual assets that we'll be making in this lecture today. We'll be creating two utility nodes, one simple and one slightly more complex. Um, the first one is going to be the simple Unreal Texture node. And this node has two functions. One, apply a material that we can use in Unreal. And two, create some basic UV layout if the UVs are missing. And then after that, we're going to upgrade this node, basically create a copy and create an extrusion version as well. Now, the reason for that is because I would like to have a ready made node that I can use to apply a texture on my extrusions in my main tool set. And this will make it a lot easier to apply some of our materials um, because we'll have various functions available to project our textures on this object. For example, we can use the sweep around function, which will allow us to have a continuous texture along the sides of this object, unless you hit the seam like there. But we can also project it in the orthogonal projections, so in X and Z, right? And then we can scale independently those textures if we want to. Or alternatively, we can go and project our textures in a unitized method. So it will try to project them in the zero to one space inside of our UV space as much as possible. So it will try to match that. And then we can scale them if we need to in each of these orientations. So we can stretch it or scale it as much as we want. This is useful if we need to make sure our textures are exactly the shape of our object. Now in our case, in our building, we are mostly going to use these on either the sweep mode for things like balconies or um, the edges of our building uh, trims. And alternatively, we're going to use unitized for the elevator shafts or for the staircases, for example. Now down below, we have two other options and that's for the top and bottom. So each one of those has also its own UV projection. We can either project based on world space, so we can have a certain size projected on the top, or based on its unit space, so it will try to match the object again. And the same thing applies for the bottom. Um, now, next to that, as you saw, this object also acts as an extrude node in itself. So over here, I can say what parts I want to keep. We're going to replicate some of the behavior of the extrude node. So we can take the bottom and remove that, for example. We can set groups on this object. So if we look at those, we have different groups for different parts of the object. We have the bottom, the sides, the top, and even the X and Z direction right there. Depending on uh, what mode we're actually using, if we use sweep around, we don't have that. And then finally, we also have a group field so if I go up top to the tool here and I grab the selection option, we can select what part we want to extrude, apply that, and then it will only extrude based on that. So we have quite a bit of flexibility here. 
But the reason that I'm creating my own extrusion node is because the default poly extrude node cannot be compiled. And also its UV behavior is slightly different than that of another node, the sweep node, that we are going to use to make this one work. So let's have a quick look at the two different nodes that we could use to apply UVs to an extrusion. And then I'll explain why we're going to use this one instead. So over here on the right, I have a poly extrude. So let's grab a grid again. I'm going to UV that one and apply a quick shade like so. And then here's a poly extrude. So the poly extrude is simply going to take our surface and it's going to extrude it up, right? Now, if we scroll down to the bottom, then we can find down here the texture coordinates option. And by default, this is actually turned on. As long as a texture or UV layout um, exists on this object, and this is turned on, it will generate UVs on your extrusions sides. Okay. Now, in this case, it will try to match the resolution of the original texture on top of the part that was extruded. So if I grab my UV texture here and I scale this one, then it will try to scale the sides along to match that scale. So that can be quite useful if you want to have a basic UV layout on the edges of your object. If this is a different shape, it will still try to maintain it. It can be useful, but personally, I find this to be a little too restrictive for what we are trying to do. So instead, I'm going to use a sweep node. And the sweep node over here on the left, if we look at that one, if we turn it on over here under UVs and attributes, has the ability to compute UVs right there. And this basically means that the sweep node will try to project our UVs along the border of our object. So we get this really long strip along the edge and if we scale our object, then it will stretch the UVs along. And finally, another reason that I really like the sweep node and its UV features is because it also allows us to normalize our computed UVs based on the height of our line. So if I use that one and I apply it, then it will um, try to unitize them over there. As a result, it will stretch with the height of our mesh. Now, in our case, if we're going to compare the poly extrude node and the sweep node, I'm going to use the sweep node because there's better UVs for my purpose, but also because it can actually be compiled and the poly extrude cannot. Now, if we look over here on the nodes and I press the D button, then under context specific badges, you'll find the non compilable flag. And I've set this one to large. So you see this giant gear icon with a no symbol in it. And that basically means that this node is not compilable. Now, um, we'll go over compiling in the last video of this module when we want to optimize our tool set and make it faster. And I'll dedicate an entire video to that. But just to prevent us from building some nodes into our utilities that cannot be compiled, at least the ones I can avoid, right? I'm going to be using a sweep node. Now, you can see that right now these utility nodes are not compilable. Um, and that's because of a quick shade node inside of this network. We'll be using this initially to display our textures, but when we go into the optimization chapter, we'll remove that node and we'll place it later on in our network. But for now, I suggest that you follow along with the next set of videos in this chapter where we'll build the um, utility nodes and then install them into the tool. So you have everything you need. And then at the end of the uh, module, we are going to optimize the tool set with the compiling system. So we'll deal with it then. Now at this point, um, I'm going to split the video here. Um, in the next video, we are going to start working on the simple Unreal Texture node. And then after that, we are going to dedicate two videos to the Extrude and Texture node. And then finally, I'll have one more to install it into our tool set and um, deal with the final functions for that. And in the end, we are going to get this result over here. So we are going to texture our building and then after that we'll deal with the rest of the tool set such as the uh, balconies, the elevators and the staircase. But for now I hope this video was informative to you about UVs and how to use them in Houdini. Uh, 
and I'll hope to see you in the next video where we'll go and build the first utility asset. So thank you for watching this video and have a good one.